Today's Teardown is a little bit different of an engine than I normally get. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I'll ever get another one, but I'm happy I got this one. This is a red top Nissan SR20 DET found in JDM 200 SXs. And we didn't really get this engine here ever. We got it in front wheel drive, non-turbo configuration cars like the G20, the NX, Sentras, but we didn't get the turbo version in a rear wheel drive platform. So a lot of people swap these in the 240 SXs. It's like likely the number one swap because it's such an easy swap into those cars. As a matter of fact, one of those cars ended up in our local self-service yard and we got to it first. We pulled the swap out of it. Well, second, someone pulled the turbo first, but we pulled the swap out of it knowing that it might be a question mark. It turns out that it has less compression than a bad rotary. Well, okay, it has the same compression as a bad rotary engine, which is zero. It has no compression. So I don't know what's wrong with it. All I know is for what I paid for it, plus I got the trans and the ECU and the pedals and all the other good stuff, I'm not gonna get hurt. All the parts on this are worth a bunch of money. The cam sensor, all the injectors, all that stuff's worth money. So I'm not really concerned with getting my money back out of it. It would have been nice to sell a good swap, but we're gonna tear it down and see what went wrong. Right off the bat, this swap was not done the best. The harness is pretty butchered up. It has lots of broken connectors. That's not from my guys pulling it. That's just from whoever had this together. We pulled it pretty cleanly, but it still is pretty rough. The car has some questionable things on it. Uh, so I'm not surprised that the engine is bad. And you can tell by the amount of corrosion in the throttle body that it's likely that this engine and that car sat quite some time before it went to the salvage yard. It could have come from a tow lot, could have been off the street. I'm not sure. Either way, we're gonna take it apart. Let's see what went wrong. First, I'm gonna have you guys listen to what this sounds like when it turns over. Because it's not good. It's not good at all. It's screaming. So yeah, there's that. The first step is going to be to pull the plugs and see what they look like. What? Cool. So we got one that's unhappy. Ooh, that one's full of water. Well, the plugs all look pretty good, albeit it was clear that water was sitting in the plug well. They were loose because my guys did a compression test, but nothing's damaged, nothing's re-gapped. The engine didn't have a say in how much gap there is in the plug, so let's keep going. The next step is going to be to peel the valve cover off and see what the inside of the engine looks like. Whoa, that's dark. I really wouldn't call this sludge, but I would say that this has suffered from extended oil change intervals. There's lots of varnish, everything's super dark. It's not supposed to look like this. Uh, we're gonna turn this engine over and see what it does with the cover off. I am really concerned with the lack of tension between the cams on the, uh, like in the bridge here between the two cams and taking an exhaust cam. So let's turn this over. Almost sounds worse. I don't know how it's possible. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad. It's screaming at me. Let's see if we can put this thing in some some kind of time. Initially, I thought it might be out of time. Uh, I've got the cams lined up. Well, I can already see that the keyway. 
it appears to be in time. And if it's out of time, it might only be a tooth off. So I don't think that's the issue, which is pretty scary if I'm being honest. I figured that was what was wrong. Next, I'm gonna start stripping some of the outside parts off this engine so I can pull the cams and get the head off. I pull the cam sensor off first. That wasn't the right bolt. And now I'm gonna continue trying to get this harness apart. Zip ties everywhere. All right, there's a very butchered harness. Now let's start pulling the intake manifold. So we got a couple coolant hoses. There's my socket. We're just dropping everything today. All right, got this last hose here. There we go. I know it's really hard to see, but there's just a little bit of rust pitting on the top of all of the intake valves. Next, we'll pull the timing tensioner. There we go. Next, we'll take the cam gears out. Well, that wasn't what I wanted to happen. Drop the washer all the way down. Cool. Oh well, we'll get it out. It's about normal wear on these. Now we can start getting the cams out of it. Now we're gonna crack all the cam caps loose. Oh, I guess we gotta get that out of the way. See what we've got here. This is always fun on these Nissans. Well, the cam itself doesn't really look bad. So it looks pretty good. So the head. The journals in the head for the cam look pretty good. At first I was pretty concerned with the way they looked uh, just because of their color, but I can't feel any deep grooves. There's a little bit, a little bit of wear on some of these, but I was actually pretty surprised to see them in this good of shape. There we go. This cam also looks pretty good. Don't see any deep grooves or signs of oil starvation yet. Just a little bit, not, not really noteworthy. While we're here, we're gonna get the front two head to timing cover. Those will be required to pull the head. Get a few things prepped before we go to pull this head all the way off. Rain clamps, it's a very love-hate relationship. They're some of the best clamps as clamps, but they come off terrible. There we go. All right, I'm gonna get a bucket because I don't think this is actually drained. All right, that should just hang out there. And now we can pull the head bolts. Before I start taking the head bolts loose, I'm going to spray them out with some brake clean and kind of get any of the debris out of there. Uh, they're hex bolts, 10 millimeter hex bolts, and if I strip one out, I'm gonna be in a bad spot. So whatever I can do to avoid that, 
I'm gonna do. Something kind of strange about the SRs, they have external head bolts, these little 6x1.0 10 millimeter headed bolts. There's one here and there's one here. And they're so fun to get to. This one I already got cracked loose. This one's actually the tough one, but I'll probably end up just using a box end wrench on it and then my fingers to get it the rest of the way out. Here goes nothing. Here we go. Oh man. Those are tight, but they're head bolts, so they should be. You know what? We're gonna get a longer breaker bar. All right, let's get this one a whirl here. One thing I noticed as I was pulling this apart is it has two broken off exhaust manifold bolts and these are pretty hefty ones. So that'll be some work to get those out, but it's not a, not the end of the world. So let's go ahead and get these head bolts out. Before I go any further, I'm going to put the, uh, some of these cam caps back in place. Uh, that way I don't lose them. It'll be easier to keep track of everything. There we go. Just a little convincing, that's all. Chain tensioners, huh? Oh, I think that chain is actually keeping it. You guys are laughing at me right now. There we go. Well, that head gasket looks rough. Look what that coolant looks like. The head actually looks really good. Pretty happy about this. Although I'd like to find a cause for no compression. That would be nice. Here's what the block looks like. I already checked. All the rods are fixed position rods. No adjustable ones. The cylinder walls don't look awful either. They actually look pretty decent. So I really don't know why this has no compression. I mean, I, I'm not going off of my own readings. I'm going off of what I was told. But I'm inclined to believe them. Maybe it's a ring issue. Let's turn this short block over. I know it's going to do some bad stuff with the chain, but let's turn this short block over and see if we can get sounds out of it like we heard when it was complete. So I'm going to turn this over a little bit. Uh, I'm going to kind of hold the chain up so it doesn't get all bound up on the crank. And there's that noise again. Oh, well, now we're just tightening. Oh, well, that sounds bad. Oh, I see a problem. That's rust. Pretty, pretty severe rust. Well, relatively severe rust. Let me show you. Here's cylinder four. This is the quote unquote bad one. I don't really believe them that this had no compression in any cylinder. Um, but this cylinder, I believe, so that is pretty ugly looking. Aside from the fact it makes terrible noises, the piss the rings do, we're going to spray them with some WD-40 or some kind of lubricant and see if we can get that noise to stop. I don't really expect much here. Just understand that this isn't fixing anything. It's just shushing something. Uh, it turns over so much better. Yeah, 
That's decent. That is decent. Right, those rings clean that cylinder up pretty good. Yeah, not bad. That cylinder still looks pretty ugly. I feel a lot better that this looks this way. I know that that sounds crazy, but if I had just torn down a good SR20 that I could have sold somebody complete for no reason, I would have been pretty mad, but I'm not. I definitely wouldn't have felt good selling it this way to somebody. And this way, someone has all the parts to build one and these cylinders look really nice. Really nice, perfect. Just this one, so there must've been some water or coolant that got into this cylinder and uh, sat. It's really unfortunate. All right, so let's get this crank fully off. Now it's time we make a mess. Maybe. Oh, we got some oil. Cool, it's not drained at all. All right, let's get this lower pan off. One thing about Nissan bolts that I do not care for is the lack of flanges on the heads. It means that you have to fight all the bolts to get out of your socket. Oh, there we dropped the head. Oh, hey, there's that washer from the, uh, from the cam. I was looking for that. Inside the pan is definitely dirty, but I don't see any notable debris. So I don't think anything blew up in here. Pickup is clean. These are both good things. I do want to talk about this plug. So a lot of yards, like self-service yards like LKQ and pick and pull, they puncture pans. They have a machine that pops a hole in the pan, sucks all the oil out, and then inserts this plug on its way out, which is probably the fastest and most economical way to do it. However, you ruin a lot of oil pans that way. And I've also seen them do it on aluminum transmission cases, which I, I literally cannot understand for two seconds why you would do that. If it's got a pan, it's bad enough. Don't puncture the case. That's... You can't make any money on that. Let's go ahead and get this baffle out of the way. Now I think we can pull this oil pan. All right, I think I've got all the bolts out. Except for, nope. Yeah, all the bolts are out. Even the one that locks the engine in the stand. Ha! This looks pretty dirty, but I don't see any real debris. Next thing on the agenda is to pull this little baffle out of the way so that we can get the pickup off and then pull the timing cover. Oh, these bolts! All right, now with this out of the way, all right, now that we can pull this out of the way, have access to that 10 millimeter right there, pull those couple of 12s off, and the pickup is off. Gasket looks okay. Start getting this timing cover off, shall we? Uh, there's a couple that the water pump stuff's in the way, which I'm not really taking that stuff off right now. Getting that off is going to be fun. Actually, it looks like I'm going to have to. Yep, I have to. I tried to get, I tried to be lazy 
And this is what it gets me. Doing the work I should have done from the very beginning. Let that be a lesson. I don't know why I didn't do this from the very beginning. That was dumb. Okay, it's time for you to let go. There we go. And now I can get to the rest of the timing cover bolts. It's also the oil pump. Ooh, one more. There's the oil pump built in the timing cover. Put that over here. Go ahead and pull this chain out of here. Let go. Oh, I remember this. It's been a while since I did one of these. I have to pull the rails off. Nope, that's gonna round out. Oh, well, that's great. Great. Let's try the other side. Let's mess that one up too. Oh, see, that one came right out. Nope. Apparently those bolts are very tight. It's about time for a new socket, I guess. One easy way to fix this. I got this special wrench right here. Just, oh, I guess I didn't mean to do that. Huh. Huh, weird. That's weird. That's weird. Look, the chain came off. That wrench is a miracle worker. Yeah, I'll deal with those later. Now I don't have all that stuff hanging off of here. Now we're going to turn the crank over so we can get start getting the rods and pistons out of this thing. Look at that. It's beauty. All right, first we're going to do one and four. These aren't super tight. And bearings look pretty good. Did not want to do that. Nope, did not want to do that. The bearings don't look too bad. Uh, number two has a little bit of wear, and don't mind those marks, those are from my pry bar getting these out. But bearings look pretty good, and the pistons, pistons all look pretty good, even the one that decided to uh, fall out of the block. That was my bad there. These are normal rods. This is your rod on water. This is clearly bent. It's not as bent as I've seen in the past, but. <laughs> Uh, it's also, the wrist pin is very stiff compared to the cylinders that did not try to compress water. You can't compress water no matter how hard you try. Water always wins. Now it's time to remove this main cap girdle and then the main caps.
Let's get this crank out. The crank looks fantastic. It's perfect. There's not a single mark on it. All the main bearings look really good as well. But I didn't really suspect an oiling issue once we started pulling the cam caps. So I'm not surprised here. Cylinders one, two, and three, the walls look fantastic. Uh, there's a few ridges in that one. It's not terrible. This, that's not so pretty. You can feel it with your fingernail. It's definitely going to need to be gone over. I don't think this is something that would have just cleared itself up with running. It's pretty unfortunate that this happened. I think what happened to this engine is very clear. Someone was driving, drove through a big puddle or some other means of getting water in the intake. And well, no matter how hard you try, you're still not going to compress water with your engine. I don't know why people keep trying this. It always ends up in a bent rod or some major catastrophic failure. And thankfully in this case, it wasn't super terrible. It wasn't a catastrophic failure. I've got plenty of good parts to sell, but I have to admit that when I first started taking this engine apart, it felt wrong. It felt like I was taking apart a good engine and I do not like to do that. That's not, I don't like taking stuff apart for the sake of taking it apart if it's something that I can sell. However, once I pulled that cylinder head and I saw the rust on the top of cylinder four, I felt a lot better. And I didn't feel better because the engine was bad. I felt better because I wasn't ruining a good engine. SR20s, especially red tops, the earlier engines are getting harder and harder to find and they're getting more and more expensive. And I certainly don't want to take one out of circulation. The good news is this engine has a ton of good parts to sell. Like everything but one rod and piston is a sellable component. I, virtually nothing will end up in the scrap bin and it'll keep a lot of other SR20s going. So I feel good about that. And working on this engine kind of brought me back. I haven't worked on an SR20 in quite some time and there is nothing like working on an 80s or an early 90s Japanese engine. They're pretty much idiot proof to take them apart. There's no special tools required and there's a far cry from modern engines. If you'd like to buy parts from this engine or any of the other engines I've torn down, I'm gonna leave my email in the video description. And as always, I love all the comments, all the criticism and the feedback. I love it all and I'll catch you on the next one.